Welcome to the Ocean Odyssey Grants Webinar. My name is Carmen Player, again, edu uh, Education and Program Operations Manager here at the National Marine Sanctuary Foundation, and my pronouns are they, them, and theirs. And also, Liz, do you want to introduce yourself, too? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Liz Hobley. I'm the Education Team Lead at NOAA Ocean Exploration. My pronouns are she, her. Right on. Um, and thank you in advance for your uh, grace and compassion. Uh, this is our first webinar, so I'm just going to kind of move towards uh, sharing the actual screen view of our PowerPoint, and hopefully you got to see my face some other time. Uh, so we're going to jump right into it. Excellent. So during this time of our webinar, we're going to be covering, of course, the Ocean Odyssey grant. You'll get to learn about the background of it, as well as the different impacts uh, for the years that we've been uh, in partnership in creating this opportunity for uh, young folks and young professionals as well. And then we're also going to talk about in detail what are the specific elements of the award that you need to be in uh, focused on, as well as what are some different tips and considerations that you can have in order to be successful in this process process and what is always super important to make sure that you are feeling confident and competent when it comes to submitting all the application materials to CSTAR, which is our platform that we'll be using to accept, uh, excuse me, applications, to review applications, to communicate different elements of your proposal and application. When I say application, application and proposal kind of are interchangeable in a lot of ways. So if you hear those two, that's what that means. Also, if you would like to follow along with the actual RFP, you can do so with the QR code or by clicking on the link, well, the link below that is also going to be on our website if you go to opportunities to request for proposals and to the Ocean Odyssey grant link. Perfect. And now Liz. Yeah, thanks, Carmen. I was just posting that link to the RFP in the chat as well for folks. Um, so a little oh, bit of background about how we got here to the grants um, to hopefully help frame and set up what we are looking for um, in order to uh, for projects to support with this opportunity. So a little bit of background about the foundation and NOAA Ocean Exploration. Um, our two organizations have worked together for over two decades to provide ocean exploration education materials and activities that collectively are designed to help bolster ocean literacy across the nation and bring excitement and wonder of deep sea exploration into classrooms across the country. Um, over those two decades, this partnership has resulted in the development of countless educational resources. Um, some of you may be familiar with our collections of ocean exploration materials or the professional development workshops that we host across the country um, with our alliance partners or aquariums and informal education centers. Um, shout out to our alliance partners that are on the call and people have attended our past workshop. Um, but in 2020, like many of you, our educational activities uh, dramatically changed since we were unable to host our in-person workshops, which were our specialty up until that point. We had to get a little creative in what we could do to support the goal, our goal of getting ocean science, phenomena, skills, and career awareness into classrooms. And so we began a major effort during 2020 to develop all of our, a bunch of new lessons, um, including topical virtual workshops to share them, and even launched a collaborative website, the Deep Ocean Education Project, with our partners at Ocean Exploration Trust and Schmidt Ocean Institute to help get our resources out there. Um, however, we were still really looking for ways to directly support our educators, a piece that we were missing with those in-person workshops. And so thanks to a very genius former colleague of ours, Alex Peretz, um, she had the idea to start offering mini grants directly to educators to help them purchase supplies or take kids on experiential learning field trips, really anything to help us get ocean exploration education into classrooms around the country. Um, and thus the Ocean Odyssey grants were born. Uh, so just this year, we even grew that Ocean Odyssey grant portfolio to also include DEIJA focus grants in another NOAA mission area, Marine Debris, and are hoping that this opportunity continues to grow for years to come. Um, jumping to this next slide, this is our reach to date, something that we are incredibly proud of. So as I mentioned, this is our fourth year. So over the past three years, we have supported 39 projects specific to ocean exploration. And those are all the blue shades of markers around the country. We've reached 4,764 K-12 students, primarily middle school, high school, um, 207 college students, and over 1,000 educators through those various projects. 
Those all have little asterisks because we still have some final grant reports from this year that are rolling in a little late. Um, and then the green markers there, you can see where we've been able to expand with the marine debris portfolio as well. And we hope to add markers for your organization this year. And so with that, I'll kick it back to Carmen to share a little bit about this year's grant. Yes, right on. So uh, our objective and our overarching goal is to really support the future of ocean workforce that is more representative of the U.S. demographics by funding projects that minimize the barriers to entry and for retention of diverse learners from communities, communities historically marginalized from the ocean, uh, from ocean science and from the exploration industries. If we're going to be serious about DEIJA, then we actually have to put our money where our mouth is, and that's where we're about. So this being said, uh, to do this, our objective was to fund the opportunity to further these, these initiatives that will increase inclusion in and out or in and or the access to STEM education and workforce development opportunities for diverse youth in middle school, high school, undergraduate, and community college to learn more about the ocean science and exploration field. So that being said, every single one of these proposals, proposals or applications have to meet or demonstrate some type of element in connection to these specific areas, those being deepen, deepening students' understanding of the ocean and our Great Lakes, increasing student awareness of ocean careers and advancing STEM skills uh, that's applicable to ocean science. So if we were to look at what this looks like in the entire breadth of the grant awards, we're right here in August 15th, uh, well, the August 15th through September 30th window, which is our request for proposals. We wanted to make sure that we also gave an opportunity for us to give as many tools and as many opportunities for folks to acquire the information and knowledge that you need in order to be successful at your different proposals and ultimately your projects that are going to impact the lives of young folks. I'm going to say it out loud. You're going to be able to provide opportunities to create core memories with young folks and actually help folks have these seeds of imagination and wonder and making these connections about how I can become an ocean steward, how I can also ensure that I'm being a guardian of the waterways that have been given to us. And so we are really adamant about making sure that you have everything that you need during this application window. So that is August 15th to the September 30th. And then internally, we'll be doing our own review of the different proposals and applications. And within October, we will also announce those those recipients who won the different uh, grants and awards. In November, we'll have our grant sent out, and that's also when funds will release. During this time, you will also receive information because we're going to have a kickoff meeting to make sure, again, that you're successful, that you understand what are the areas of compliance, what even uh, when it comes to logos and photo releases, what are requirements, and why do, how do we make sure that you're being successful with every element of the uh, experience of the project, including if you need to have an extension, what does that mean and where the implications in the process thereof. So we're going to also make sure you're successful before you even get into implementation period. The implementation period is from December 2024 to June 2025. That is what we're calling our implementation period. So August 1st, 2025 is when final reports are due. When we say final reports, we mean final reports. That means you're spending this down to zero. That means you've submitted all the information that about your expected outcomes that have met with the objectives. And if there is any other element in regards for photos or videos or anything else like that, you would send it all to us at that time. Don't worry. We're not going to have you just thinking about it by yourself and put it on your own Google slide or a Google invite. We have folks and we have systems within that will also reach out to grantees who have uh, finished their projects to make sure that you're meeting all the deadlines that are required in order to be successfully uh, finishing out your projects. So who's eligible? Of course, we have school districts, institutions of higher education. That means like my colleges and the sort. Also, our nonprofit and for-profit institutions, state and local entities. The biggest element about this is that we have to make sure that, well, our goal was to make sure that we expanded this to different groups of folks who were engaged with education as much as possible, which is why it's not just elementary school or not just high schools. But we also engage with uh, different nonprofit and for-profit entities that are deep into the work of ocean education and literacy. That being said, competitive awards will not only incorporate but prioritize diversity, equity, inclusion, justice, and accessibility when writing their proposals and performing their works. We are needing you to make this 
your North Star? How are we ensuring that we're making this more inclusive? How are we making sure we're uh, extending the opportunities for individuals, children, communities that might have been marginalized and completely forsaken, even forgotten about in this actual field of work, have opportunities to have all of these experiences and the support because this grantee, whoever you are, thought about them first. Also, previous grantees are definitely eligible. And we want to also provide new opportunities for new friends to be able to conduct and implement this work. We strongly encourage, and it is a good idea. If you're a previous grantee, you could definitely partner with new folks in order to help advance their project and also to be a resource. Again, we're not saying you will not receive a grant if you are returning. Just understand we're putting preference and we are also helping to encourage more new grantees to apply because we want to expand this opportunity to new communities, to new states, to new uh, territories. Speaking of territories, it's not just the continental United States at all. It is the United States, the territories, and the freely associated states that are also eligible to, uh, to apply. Now, friends from the federal government, employees of federal agencies, Unfortunately, you will not be considered for this. So hopefully you're not on this call. So I hate to say that you can't do it, but you cannot. So we make sure very clearly that the folks who are able to do so are listed here. And if you have any questions, if you are an entity that can't apply, just ask and we can let you know. Right on. All right. And if we're following along with the RFP there, that kind of brings us to page three. And so, again, we are looking to support projects that ultimately result in one of three objectives, or at least one of three. Deepening student understanding about the ocean and or Great Lakes, we love our Great Lakes too. Increasing student awareness of ocean careers and developing our advancing STEM skills related to ocean sciences. Um, I do see some questions in the chat. I will point out those outcomes could be direct or indirect. And what we mean by that is your projects might directly target students in that our target age range of middle school, high school, or college age, or indirect by targeting the educators that work with those students. Um, so at part of our capacity building effort, if if you need to train teachers in your area, because this is such a new topic, we absolutely respect that and want to support that as well. Um, we're in it for the long haul. So if ultimately it helps support those students, count us in. Um, some examples on page three of past work. Um, again, that list is not extensive of what we would look to fund with this opportunity. Um, I pulled three out here just for um, to highlight specific pieces of them. One of our past grantees, Butler County High School, is a great example of a group that we have funded twice. Um, in year one, they used their grant funding to purchase supplies, including lab benches and ROV materials and pools, um, offset student field trip costs, all in order to develop skills and help their students learn about ocean exploration. Um, in year three, they received another grant from us because they wrote back in and um, submitted a proposal to really expand this work. Uh, this time, taking the kits that they had already purchased, adding a couple extra supplies, um, but taking their students to a local environment where they could actually deploy those ROVs and take that STEM learning even further. Um, the Mystic Aquarium is another great one that supported educators. So again, this is more of an indirect outcome hitting those target areas. They hosted a teacher workshop series um, where they had both virtual and in-person trainings and provided local science teachers with kits of materials and lessons for them to implement in their classroom. And even brought in an expert from our office, which we are happy to support as best we can. I can't guarantee everything will work out timing-wise, but if, if that's of interest, please reach out. Um, and then another feature project here is the Oregon Sea Grant and Oregon State University. They were one of our funded projects in year two, and they partnered with a local school district to specifically target English language learning students. Um, and bring them onto the OSU campus and out on the research vessel where those students actually got to participate in ongoing research led by near peer college students or college students that looked like them and were from similar backgrounds as them to empower those students um, to pursue STEM paths within ocean sciences in the future. Again, not exhaustive, um, just some great examples. If we continue on to the next page of the RFP or page four, we've got some priorities there. And these are things that we are pointing out that will make your project shine. Um, so this list is here. I won't bore you by reading it to you, um, but instead we'll again share a bunch of examples because that's my favorite thing to do of some of and feature some of our past grantees. Um, so the, the top picture there, the Reef Check Foundation. Their project was to engage students in Northern California tribal communities in dive training. 
Um, they received grant funding from another entity as well, pulled their money or pulled their money and specifically applied to our grant in order to cover student stipends for this work. And the point there being recognizing the barrier to participating in ocean sciences can is often that not everybody can afford to take an unpaid internship and that itself is exclusive. Um, and so they were able to offer paid opportunities uh, with our grant funding to these students, again, targeting diverse learners, identifying a barrier very clearly and a project that overcame it um, and have plans to continue beyond that by offering and engaging those students in future reef check opportunities now that they are certified. Um, so a great example of a lot of these priorities right here on this list being met. Um, the SUNY Genesio project uh, funded computers uh, for student researchers to complete and research stipends for those students. Um, and those students all did completed research projects using freely available NOAA ocean exploration data. All of our data is free within NOAA, so great opportunity to get your students using data. Um, and they also offered a series of professional developments for the broader SUNY Genesio community on how to engage in ocean science um, and just professional developments in general, like resume writing, to help them get there. Um, the three students that did their research project even went on to co-author a publication with research faculty and some of our staff. Um, so a great example here of a group that used NOAA data um, was ocean exploration or deep sea focus. Again, we are, it is a funded project through NOAA ocean exploration. We love our shallow and coastal water folks. Um, but we would prefer to see some deep or open ocean or Great Lakes focused projects. Um, and then another example here is our Lincoln Middle School students or school. They purchased ROV materials, another ROV education project, great way to bring STEM education into the classroom. Um, and they were looking for funding to buy supplies for those students as well as some curriculum for it. Um, and they also incorporated and applied what those students learned through the ROV STEM process, design, build, test, retest, um, redesign, uh, and use several, and connected it to different NOAA applications, teaching students about marine debris, ocean exploration, again, pulling in lots of NOAA resources here. Um, so that extensive list on page four of the grants is a great way to make your project stand out amongst the rest. Um, and now finally going through the rubrics. We, we are trying to be as fully transparent as possible. We want to set you up for success. We want to make our lives hard and have too many great proposals to go through rather than too little. Um, so the two biggest scoring criteria are at the top of the rubric. The first one here um, is does this proposal address historic and or persistent barriers in STEM education in the workforce development pipeline that prevent diverse learners from marginalized communities from entering and or persisting in ocean science or exploration careers. That is a mouthful um, to say, again, we are looking for, are you targeting a diverse community? And those, the communities that are priority for NOAA are defined in the RFP. So please make sure your projects are supporting a community that is defined by NOAA and the US government as a marginalized community to make your project shine. Um, and do you clearly identify the barriers that this community has either had in the past or still have that have limited them from being represented in this field as fairly as they should be and connect the dots of how your project specifically addresses that barrier. Those are the big pieces there. Um, and we're also looking for you to demonstrate the capacity to engage. So that's really how to make this an A plus proposal. So have you previously worked with this community? Are you partnering with another organization that specifically targets this community? Or are you expanding your work and can you show how you are going to do this meaningfully and not just say that you're going to expand in a new community? Um, and our example there Sorry. is the University of Southern California. Um, they were another diving group. They brought in BIPOC students for a diving education program and covered all of the upfront expenses for the students to get trained, including their health, physical, and gear before bringing in the Catalina Island. So rec their diverse community was BIPOC students, keeping that broad um, for their first year of their proposal. We'll get, they're actually a multi-fund or multi-year project too. Um, and then the barrier is the expense to scuba training was that they identified and their program directly tackled that. The second criteria is, uh, does your proposal advance ocean workforce development opportunities for diverse learners from marginalized communities? So this is the big scoring criteria relating back to those three objectives, whether you're hitting them directly or indirectly. Tell us how you're doing it and tell us what resources from NOAA that you're going to use to do it. 
Um, we are uh, a couple notes to that. We are there's no preference for a proposal that hits one of these objectives really well versus one that hits all three. Um, so don't feel like you need to skim the surface in order to hit all three. If your specialty is one of these, that is a okay. Um, and while we would love for you to use our NOAA Ocean Exploration Educational Resources, of which we do offer a lot, um, we in general just want to see ocean science get out into students' classrooms. So by all means, there is no preference for if you're using a resource from us versus any other NOAA office, so long as it has that open ocean or ocean exploration theme. Um, so not preferably not something that's watersheds or shallow water. Uh, and our example here is the Ocean Research College Academy at Everett, or ORCA. Um, these students uh, adopted a float through the NOAA Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory up in Seattle, and they created a whole new statistics course at their local community college using NOAA data, teaching students how to use freely uh, accessible data in their area um, to analyze environmental conditions. Next one is, is this proposal feasible in the period of performance? Um, so some of the things we're looking for here are, can you, are you telling us a detailed timeline? Are you showing us that this is a fully thought out proposal versus kind of vague and what you're going to do? Mainly because we recognize this as a pretty short implementation period. That is the limitation from our funding source here. Um, and so we want to know that you are set up for success. So the more details you can share in the timeline, the more you are demonstrating that you're ready to jump in and tackle this and also probably have some flexibility built in for when things don't always go as planned, which we know does happen. Um, some other examples are things here that score highly in this category are do you have letters of support from all project partners? Again, showing that you have complete buy-in. Um, and if you are a project that is entirely outside, do you have contingency plans? And so a great example here is Hopefully your project does not fall or rely on completely outdoor events on the last day of the implementation period. That would not be great. Um, a great example of a project that was really successful in this category is the Edmond Central School District. This was a really fun project. Um, they were another teacher training program, so did not directly work with students, but ultimately that is their outcome too. Um, they trained a large group of teachers from across North Dakota or South Dakota, sorry, I need to correct that, South Dakota, um, and put them on a bus all the way to California where they did a full tour of the California coastline and marine sanctuaries there. Um, and before that, before hopping on the bus, actually offered over the course of a month or two months, uh, marine science and ocean science and exploration professional development workshop. So introducing these teachers to the science behind ocean exploration and educational resources and even giving them time to adapt those resources to their classroom needs. So really cool project. And next one is our, is your budget realistic and have meaningful use of funding? And so what we're looking to do there is really directly support the activities that impact learning um, in some capacity. And so really is most of your funding not tied up in staff support, but directly going to your diverse learners. Um, so whether that's activity costs like a field trip or stipends or materials, um, we saw some of the pre-submitted questions someone asked, can you feed your students that you bring in for your activities? Absolutely. Um, that's where we want to see funding be prioritized. Um, and then to score really highly, we just want to see a detailed breakdown of that. So in the application, the budget is broken down into some major categories, but would love to see your details that you've thought out exactly where those expenses are going versus a proposal that just says we need eight thousand dollars for to buy rov supplies brought like blanket show me what you're trying to buy um and so that we know those funds are justifiable um the next one is about evaluation so we want to know do you have plans to measure the impact of your project and again we recognize the implementation period is relatively short here, so we do have managed expectations for what's realistic um, in terms of impact in that time frame. But we want to see that you are planning to measure it, and that needs to go beyond just reach. Um, so what we are not looking for here is telling us just how many students you plan to engage, but actually tell us what meaningful 
uh, education, the opportunity you are offering, and again, connecting it back to those three objectives. How are you going to demonstrate success in meeting those? Um, and so our example project here is the Wagner Community School. This was another one that was uh, teacher training and ended in a really cool cross-country field trip to the coast for South Dakota. Um, but they actually did pre and post testing of all of their teacher participants and the students in those teachers' classrooms and had measurable impacts at the end. So really, really cool beginning to end uh, evaluation to make sure they were staying on plate for the project. And lastly, but not least, uh, this is the little gold carrot of if taking, like you tell your students, like go for the 100, go for above and beyond, is does your project or proposed project lend itself to long-term sustainability? So can you demonstrate that this project will persist beyond this funding year? Um, and that can look, or that can really play out in a variety of ways. So the project here is a good example. This is Butler County High School again. Um, most of their year one funds went to supplies, but supplies that were not consumable just for that year. Um, so that teacher developed a full curriculum that they used for years to come and even wrote back for this year uh, on how they would apply it and take those students on a field trip. Again, this was one of our repeat grantees. Um, so supplies that will last is a great way. Um, plans to stay engaged with the community or target audience after the fact and how to connect them into a professional network that you're connected into is another great example here. Um, just show us that you've thought about the longevity of this, because again, we recognize that this is a short opportunity and we want these to have meaningful impacts long term. Right on. So now we're going to get into C Star. C Star, as I said before, is the actual platform that we're running all of our application proposals, uh, reporting and everything through in regards to the Ocean Odyssey grant. So C Star stands for Collaborative System for Awards, Activities, and Reporting. And 100% of all applicants, whether you receive the grant or not, 100% of all applicants must create a C Star profile in order to submit. Uh, your proposals and materials. And we're going to watch a quick little video about this, but I wanted to reiterate this. And the reason why this is 100% of folks who are applying have to do it this way is to ensure that we have fidelity of the system. But also, by creating your actual profile, you're already set up for accessing and applying to other RFPs, or if you have a contract or need to submit a contract for us, that you actually already have everything set up in regards to your profile, your official name, the W-9 information, so on and so forth. So we are going to actually watch a 10-minute video that walks through each element of your C-STAR uh, setup. Now, Brittany Griffith, who is our coordinator who's on the video, will tell, will speak about both RFPs and grants as well as contracts, but we're focusing in on the grant aspect. In addition, you will be able to have access to this video when um, at the end of the webinar, because we're going to send an email with the PowerPoint with uh, this actual video, as well as the transcripts from the video and from this actual uh, webinar, so we can make it accessible to everyone. So if you're like, I didn't get that, can you go back? Don't worry, we've got you, and you'll have access to that those materials. Let me start this now. All right, let's start that from the beginning. That's pretty. Carmen, there's no audio playing for the video. Sorry, one more time. There's no audio for the video. Huh. Okay, sorry about that. I can hear it just beautifully over here. Let me see what's happening. Hmm. No audio? No, not at all. Hmm. I can see the transcript on the side. That, that's, not, that's not super helpful. I'm so sorry, folks. I can hear it beautifully over here. Um, let me see if I can work this out some kind of way.
Yeah, I don't know. It might be under. I know under Zoom it's under microphone settings, but I'm not so sure with Teams. Yeah, I don't think this is spatial. Sorry about this, folks. The sharing your screen did you? Oh, sorry. I didn't even see what that said. You're sharing your screen. Did you check to include the system audio? Is it okay if I played and put the caption on? I know that's not the most ideal so we could actually hear it, but at least we could see it and keep moving through it. Again, you'll be able to access the actual link to see the video yourself, but I wanted to kind of sit in it and with it during this time. Can you all put a, a thumbs up or a yes in the chat to make sure that feels good? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Thank you, Margaret. I'll try that. Say stop sharing and try again. I, I will take that. Did that work at all? Did it work, friends? No, no audio. Okay, well, I'm going to put the caption on. Know. Sorry, sports fans. I promise you it's in detail and I will send the actual link for you, but the caption's not coming up either. It's Murphy's Law. Uh, um, and so I will drop that for you to make sure that you have access to it. I apologize, uh, but it is going to be helpful to actually walk through each element of C-Star because, as I said before, this actual element of creating your profile and up, like, updating each element of the application to C-Star will ensure that you have all of the information that we're going to be sending to you because if we have any kind of feedback to give you on any kind of revisions or clarifying questions, we'll do all that through the actual C-Star element, right? And so that being said, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint and speak. Stop sharing. Sorry, folks. And then I will share again. Sorry about that, y'all. Uh, but I will make sure, and like I said, if you need any other support or help with CSTAR, I'm here, and you'll also see an actual email for Brittany Griffith, uh, who is our coordinator during this uh, quarter, who can also provide technical support. Again, I apologize for this, but the video that you will receive, you will be able to access and have also access to the transcripts. So with CSTAR, after you've actually created your profile, it's really important for you to, and you will see this once you get into CSTAR, to actually go to what is called the View Active Grant RFP. It's always on the left-hand side. You will also see contracts. Clearly, we're not doing a contract. We're going for the RFP. And once you uh, access the RFP, you will have a list of about four different grants uh, that are actually open for the foundation. Of course, we're going to be focused on the Ocean Odyssey Grant 2024. It will actually prompt you with each one of your article, or excuse me, each uh, element of the application in CSTAR. So you will see on the RFP that there is an actual uh, link that says application template. 
you do not have to worry about making sure all the format is correct and make sure that, you know, your, your tab stops are aligned and everything else on that template. That template is really just to kind of help you capture all the information that you need so you can literally copy and paste into C-Star. I don't know if you've ever done this anywhere else in the world where you're just going feverishly writing all of your narratives and getting all your data and everything else on the, on the platform, and then all of a sudden it's not saved. You have to try to conjure that up from your memory and hopefully your good faith that you have all the details that you wanted to actually have on that application. But because of technical errors, you weren't able. So we wanted to make sure that folks also had all the materials that they need to try to thwart any kind of frustration or technical issues by using the actual template that is in that link for the RFP that says application template. That is really just to be a tool for you to capture all of your thinking to make sure you have all the information and so you can just copy and paste super easily into C-Star. There's something that's very important that we need you to know. In the actual application, uh, what we have for folks is when you get to the section of part three and it speaks of the overview of the actual organization, we have two different links. One is for school over school overview and the others for our organization background. School or overview is pretty self-explanatory. That means that's a, a middle school, high school, college, uh, community college, post-secondary college programs, like graduate programs and the sort. That's where we're focusing when it comes to the actual school overview. When we're thinking about the organization background, sometimes you could be the Boys and Girls Club. You're not necessarily a school. So you would complete the link that says organization background. And so when you're doing this, make sure that you actually click the link that is the correct one for your entity. And don't worry, that same link is on the RFP. The same link is also going to be in the actual C star. So you absolutely have to choose one of these to complete. You will download the actual form that is correct for you, complete it, Convert it to PDF because this will be part of your supplemental materials that you need to add to CSTAR at the end. You will have a complete application when you also have uploaded your school view or your organization background. In those six parts, you know that you have completed everything within your application. Once you have had the application information that's filled out, your project overview, your supplemental materials, that's when I was talking about the school overview or the organization overview. If you are also adding your letters of uh, partnership and commitment from your partners, you'll also add those at the end. So supplemental materials means for sure those, either the school overview or the background overview or excuse me, organization background, as well as like any other materials that you have to upload. Your project details, the desired impacts and outcomes, and your project budget. These six parts will mean that you have a complete a proposal or application. If you want to be considered competitive, these six parts have to be completed just to be considered competitive. So please make sure you're double checking and triple checking. Did I get all six? Did I have everything that's completed that needs to be submitted at CSTAR and the sort? Applications are due at 11.59 Eastern Standard Time. My friends in the Pacific, I'm so sorry, it, uh, it's Eastern Standard Time. It's 11.59, I think that's gonna be uh, kind of like in the early evening for you all, like five-ish maybe, I'm not quite sure, eight, I'm not sure. But we're trying to make sure that we had enough time for everyone across the, the different time zones to submit and have the time that they need in order to get that application in. You're going to get emails from different people. Who are these people and why are they important to me? Well, hopefully Liz and I will be important to you because we worked really hard to make sure you're successful, but it's okay for now. So when it comes down to it, if you are having questions about compliance, if there are any kind of question about, well, can I spend this money on this, or uh, what, what do we need to do in regards to if we did not finish our project within the time that we said on our proposal, then we'll help you to actually create an extension, uh, and depending on what it is, uh, usually it's a no-cost extension, but we'll help you walk through it, as well as ensuring that all of the funding gets dispersed to the correct entities and the right time, make sure we have all of our W-9s and everything else like that. So on my standpoint, we make sure we got all the technical elements completed. Liz is your right-hand person. 
your right hand person to make sure that if you need to get some access to some experts or if you need some type of materials from NOAA, because NOAA is deep with materials and actual networks, Liz is going to be the person who's going to be able to connect you with it. And then also Liz will make sure uh, that we are being compliant from a federal standpoint, particularly when we think about those photo releases. And we're going to go into detail about photo releases because so many great reports came in last year from 2023, but we couldn't even display a lot of it because we didn't have photo releases. And we couldn't even uh, put and edify folks on our social media in the sort because we didn't have photo releases. So we'll definitely make sure that we are uh, meeting all those elements, but uh, Liz is the keeper of all photo releases. And then Miss Sheila Curtis. Miss uh, Miss Sheila is the person that if ever there's a question about like your W-9 or if there's an invoice that's needed or the sort that's associated with your actual grant for some reason, Miss Sheila would be the person who's going to be working with you to make sure that everything is set up in the sort. So if you got an email from Miss Sheila, just know that it's going to be about some type of accounting element. And then we have three program operations coordinators. And to ensure that uh, each one of those individuals, Brittany, Jillian, and Kaya, get an opportunity to do the work across the breadth of uh, our foundation, they're on a rotating schedule. So Brittany will be working uh, with us up until January 31st. So you'll get emails with, like, your agreements, or if you – and this will come through, like, DocuSign. Or if we need to have some type of information in regards to a technical element, like we need to double-check your uh, W-9 to ensure that the names are the same for the W-9 as we have for the foundation checks or whatever it is. Whenever there's going to be a reason for extensions or if we need reports, you'll get all that information from one of the actual program operations coordinators. So if it's Brittany in 2024 and then you see it's Jillian in 2025, do not fret. It's all the same program operations coordinator. They will be, and we are constantly in, talking and um, ensuring that we're updated of where we are in the process throughout. So it won't be something that's coming out of left field for us. It might be like new for you to say, wait a minute. I was just getting, I was on an email with Brittany, but now I'm talking to Jillian. They'll just transition over the uh, care and support to the next program operations coordinator. So when Kaya is uh, maybe emailing you all right around the time of that August 1st, let's talk about your spin now, because by that time you would have already turned in your final report. Then if there's any other kind of questions where we notice that there was an issue about um about the spin down or if there's an extension that's needed, then it would be Kaya who's going to be the one who's actually reaching out to you during that time. Oh, we're just that quick. Oh, yes, because that 10 minute video didn't work. So sorry. I promise you we're going to make sure that you have it. Um, do you all have just questions in the sort? And I can stop sharing my screen and come back to you all. Yes, the webinar will be shared. What else is coming up in spirit for folks? in the chat if you have it. We've got a couple in the Q&A section, Carmen. We've got one, can the same institution submit multiple awards to different targeted programs? Um, so I'll answer this one directly. Um, okay. Yes, you can submit multiple proposals. I will warn you, we had a pretty big depth of bench um, for proposals last year. So would probably encourage you to pick the one that best fits the RFP and focus your efforts there. You could work if you're doing this with multiple partners. Um, one of your partners could step up and take the leadership role in a different one. Um, just based on the volume alone, it's unlikely that multiple would be funded through the same institution. Um, so I encourage you to focus your efforts on, on making one really shiny instead. I will say this. Could, do you mind if I say this, Liz? I'm going to say it. Go for it. Our friends in Marine Debris also have an Ocean Odyssey grant. Doesn't mean that you can't apply to another program, another award, another grant within the same scope. So there's an Ocean Odyssey uh, grants for education and outreach, and there's also one for marine debris, but it really depends on, you'd have to look at their actual RSP in the sort to see if that's something that could align or if you have another project that you're just like so fiery about. Here's the thing, you have to make sure it's feasible and sustainable and that you can complete all of it. Because lovingly and respectfully, what's not going to be um, – the best is if you're not able to actually complete your project or if you have a massive amount of money that's left over. Then it's like, okay, so come 25, 26, we got to consider, like, what happened in their experience, right? Let's just, just be very, very transparent on the onset. We want everybody to be successful. And with all this support and the encouragement of um, 
of reaching out when there are impediments or there are questions in the sort, then we're also going to be expecting and we're also going to uh, be very clear that we expect that the projects are completed and that the spend down happens to zero. And it will be actually explicitly explicitly said within our agreements that you will have once you actually receive the grant. This presentation is going to be recorded. We're also <laughs> going to put it on YouTube. Now everybody will see my technical issue, but it's okay, no pride. We will have this presentation up for everybody as well as ensuring that you have the transcripts. Anybody that's on this um, who received the initial email uh, emails that went out will also receive the PowerPoint as well as the click uh, a link to the actual video for C-Star and all the materials. Um, hopefully within the next 48 hours, I have to work with our comms team in regards to the YouTube, but I can get the actual PowerPoint and the um, C-Star video to you all, hopefully like tomorrow by close of business. Is this specific? Oh, okay. Yes, go ahead, Liz. Yeah, some of these I've been able to keep up with in the Q&A, so I'm going to try to take some of the ones that haven't been answered yet, if that's okay. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. One of the questions that just came in is, does it have to be a new program or can it be existing? And this is a great question, um, and I'm happy to take this one and come and you can tag on if that works. Sure. It can be either. It can be an existing program, but we are looking for one of two things if you are an existing program. Show us how you are taking that existing program and elevating it with these funds. So are you targeting and expanding your current program into one of our target audiences that are identified in the DEIA portion or the marginalized communities um, within the RFP that are defined by NOAA and the White House? Um, or are you taking your program and are you taking an existing program and adding an ocean exploration or open ocean component? Are you a coastal program and you are looking to expand the science learning and opportunities for those students? Um, so we, we are looking to see how you are elevating existing programs, if that's what you are applying for. Right on. And Yara, is there a specific template for the budget? Um, there, the template that is in the uh, actual application template helps to line, uh, outline all the different areas and components they were asking information about. I think that's what you were talking about, maybe, to make sure. Um, how does the program handle IDC from universities? I don't know what that means, Liz. What's IDC? Yeah, indirect costs. So this is a great one. Oh. They, they're not banned. By all means, we understand that we all have rules we have to comply with um, for finances in our institutions. But Proposals will score higher in that budget category with lower indirect costs because, again, we are looking to see funds maximally supporting program activities and not getting tied up in indirect or personnel or fringe. Um, right on. And Jacob said, you mentioned the importance of orienting the grant program around the open ocean, but can the program include a focus on interactions between the open ocean and or ecosystems such as tidal estuaries? Yes, absolutely. Um, because it open ocean, also our waterways, our watersheds and the sort like we've had um, different because lovingly and respectfully, one of the things that we also can do is make connections to how what is also connected to the ocean this, uh, from our land. Right. And so if we're also looking at estuaries as well as watersheds, we can also have projects that help to support either education around those or even um, from the standpoint, if there was like a cleanup of some sort that you wanted to do with that, that is like data driven in the sort. Maybe the, the young folks are actually picking up these different types of, of rubbish that, that they found within there and doing some work around there and presenting. That would also be like totally acceptable as well. Yeah, and I will mm -hmm. echo on that of make a connection for us. Don't assume that we're going to interpret it from reading your proposal. If all you do is talk about the activities that are coastal without really showing how you're connecting back to the grant objectives, then it's probably not going to score high in that category. We've, we've had a lot of projects like that in the past, our proposals. Um, and that is a point I will double back on our application through the CSTAR platform. There is no cutoff or word limit or character limit. So please take the space that needs to explain your project thoroughly. Um, we'd rather see you have the space to make those connections for us so we're not left wondering what you're trying to accomplish or do. Um, that said, don't write a novel. Uh, we do have to read lots of these and we have found ones that are overly wordy uh, and add in way too many adjectives. 
ultimately detract from what they're trying to communicate. So we're giving you the freedom to take the space, but encourage you to still use it wisely and and just get to the point of what you're trying to communicate. You don't need to add any fluff. Um, we just want to see the great projects you're trying to propose. I'm just putting a thumbs up on the ones that we've already completed. I think somebody just asked a new one. Lisa, will we be able to offer ROV building workshops? Oh, would I be able to offer ROV building workshops through the New York State Marine Education Association and targeted schools? I'm I'm going to assume the interpretation of that question and reinterpret it. In other words, are you able to do ROV building workshops through this specific entity? So are you asking to apply as the entity to do the ROV building? Is that the question underneath? I'm sorry, Lisa. Uh, can you add a follow up with that? Only because I don't want to assume the meaning with that. So I'm going to come back to you, Lisa, if you don't mind. If a new organization, this is Hydro, <laughs> Hydro Ocean, I'm sorry, I'm, I love a cheesy joke. And I know that's not a cheesy joke, but I just made connections. Moving on. If a new organization can be matched with an, an existing organization to learn the ropes instead of uh, bringing other collaborators the first time around, I think that's a great idea. And I think it also helps to develop this uh, network in a uh, community with folks who are have already done done this. And so this is the element of I don't necessarily want to say mentoring, but it is kind of like mentoring growing up new uh, folks, ocean odyssey adventurers. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, and we absolutely want to encourage folks to connect and participate and create your networks that can also help you be successful. Allison says our project would be tied to an annual event that occurs the first week of November. It looks like this would fall outside the implementation period. Uh, am I interpreting this correctly? Is there a possibility for our event or project uh, would fall in line with the future proposal timeframes? Uh, we will. So with the dis the actual implementation period is December 1st. So we actually won't have the funds released until November. So we unfortunately probably would not fit within that time period of the project that you're doing. Sorry, Allison. But for future years, not necessarily off the table. So one of the things we are tied to a federal funding source um, and from now on ocean exploration and that, that is why we're getting a little bit of a later start this year than we did in previous years. So those timelines have adjusted kind of one way or the other, month here, month there in the past. So not out of the picture for next year. We don't have the dates confirmed for next year. So do check back. There is a possibility that we are able to start and get the RFP out a little bit earlier, which would allow us to open up some earlier months for that implementation period. Um, but we do not have that yet. We just started a new funding cycle. So we're still, still working that through. Right on. And I also wanted to come back to Lisa. Lisa, if you would like to email me and we can actually jump on a call in a conversation, totally glad to do so because I don't know if we can actually get our back and forth interaction that we need to in order for me to dig in to get some more information. So please feel free to email me and we can set up a time for us to connect. Um, Jacob said, our grants that work directly with Marine Sanctuary staff prioritize above those that do not. We strongly encourage those connections. But as far as scoring for a rubric, right. not valued over the others, no. But they're a great example of organizations that are place-based near you. Well, some of you, we understand that everyone has a sanctuary nearby. But if you are near a sanctuary center, that's a great great place to get connected to. NOAA data, NOAA resources, not specific to our office, NOAA ocean exploration, but still have that deep in open ocean component in a place-based way that's meaningful to your students. So. Definitely a great place to look, but not higher scoring. Lisa came back. We could apply as the could, we could apply as the entity. We would like to bring the high schools to participate in the ROV building workshop uh, and also connect with entities who are doing research with ROVs like New York Aquarium, for example, to show students workforce possibilities. Lisa, I think you're ready to write your proposal. This sounds outstanding. Yes, you absolutely can. The The barring air element is for federal employees and federal entities that would not be able to actually apply for this, um, this grant. Uh, and because also the 
uh, let's see, the New York uh, State Marine Education Association is an entity that directly uh, supports education in, in ocean, marine, and science life. Like, that is perfect. Please apply, Lisa. That sounds great. Yeah, and I will put out there, Lisa, um, NISNIA has actually been funded by a National Odyssey grant in the past. Um, so we're checking in with Meg Marrero there, too, about potential projects and getting some background there before submitting. Right on. Word. I'm going to put our um, share the slide one more time in case you all want to write down and jot down our our contact information as well as of course the application is right there. Right on. And I also want to extend a deep gratitude for everyone who showed up in different places where you are. Either you're coming off of school or maybe you're in the thick of it or you made some time this evening to uh, be in attendance and be present with us uh, during this webinar. We truly believe that these are the different opportunities that are going to help change the lives of children and their families and the future generations and the sort. And the mere fact that you are here to inquire and to be committed to excellent effort to help us and all of us hold hands as we help to grow up ocean explorers in different ways means a lot. So thank you for joining us in this time. Liz, do you want to say anything? Yeah, I was. I like to use every minute if that's possible. We've got two that actually oh, yeah. came in in the chat instead of the Q and A that I can take super super quickly. So oh, I'm sorry. I was starting is to is not awarded. Um, do you get feedback? The answer is yes, with a little asterisk. It might not be immediate. So if we do, if you are not selected for funded or funding, we will get those notifications out at the same time that we notify people that are funded. We might have to circle back to get you that feedback in a timely manner. But what we were able to do last year was share highlights and what every project did well and then where we where projects fell short on the rubric um, so we did not send applicants the specific rubric but we did give you summarized feedback from that um, for areas to strengthen for future proposals in our and then the one above it from andrea if the proposal includes speaking to kids via wi-fi from a remote island field location do we want as many details as possible Yes, please. We just want to show our, you to demonstrate like who you're going to impact in order to get points there. Who's your target audience? What are you doing? And the more details you can share, the more likely you're to score higher in each of those different criteria. So the timeline piece, the budget piece, the more detail. We have people that are vague and timeline and don't score well that do great with details about the object, how they're going to meet those three objectives or one of the three. Um, so we want to hear all your details. We want to see it well thought out. Do we expect you to have every minute plans? Not necessarily. We understand some of that takes some coordination and needs to be done closer to the actual event you're thinking, but, but share with us the vision. We, we want to see what is in your mind on paper, or in this case, digital via CSAR. Yes, parents can also be included. Again, that would count as indirect. Um, as long as you're indirect or directly reaching our target audience in middle school, high school, or college age students with one of those three objectives, yes. And I went a minute over, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Liz, I think you're at the closing time. So I think I closed before because I was sharing my screen and didn't see folks. So it's all you now. All good. I think that captures everyone. Again, we will get this up online. Um, that we will have links to in a couple of places, um, but if you access this from the Ocean Explorer website, which is the NOAA Ocean Exploration website, um, we will replace the registration link there with the video um, once it's up online. We've got to get it captioned before we post it, um, but it is in the works and it's coming. So, and um, Carmen will share out things as well via email to everyone that was here tonight, as well as the video for CSAR. Right on. Thank y'all. We'll be seeing some of you soon via CSAR.